नमस्कार वेलकम एवरीबॉडी टू क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी सीरीज विथ मी आई हैव मिस्टर आर माधवन अ फार्मिंग एक्सपर्ट हु इज डूइंग हिज ओन फार्मिंग सिंस लास्ट 30 इयर्स ही इज आल्सो एन इंजीनियर वी हैव सीन अ वेरी गुड व्यूज एंड लॉट ऑफ कमेंट्स कमिंग इन दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सेशन फॉर एपिसोड 1 सो वी हैव सिलेक्टेड ऑल द मेन क्वेश्चंस माधवन सर नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी our uh, farmers are waiting eagerly for all their answers sir namaskar harsh i am very happy uh, people are interacting by watching our videos and giving us the comments and that will help us to fine tune our activities to their need i am very happy and let's go to the question so without waiting i would start the first question for you the first question is coming from mr vidu upadhya he is asking should cheeseling and soil testing be done every time prior to raising a fresh crop sizzle is done once a year prior to the monsoon and soil test is also done once a year prior to your first crop i will briefly explain why sizzle has i think last in episodes where i was mentioning about the sizzle i said it has got many benefits i'll mention only the few and the rest you know you can you can go in explore it into it the first one soil porosity crop all the crop needs a porous soil so the porosity is improved hard pan is removed third rain water harvesting is done that's the reason we are asking to do this prior to monsoon so when you are sizzling it is not plowing it is removing it is like a knife cutting across the table so that means it cuts across to a depth so that depth creating a you know hard pan loosened that means the water can percolate and the water can storage it up to that level and the plant will be using it at later part of the time and uh, see the difference between sizzle and ridger ridger is completely different ridger is making a uh, a type of a bedding for water to flow and the plant to sit the advantages of the dredger i think we explained it in earlier and also in our episode but again i'll put one or two important notes on that for you in dredger the plant moisture air combination is optimized for their performance thank you for your question next question please thank you very much sir for the answer let me just go to the next question it is from kisan putra thank you very much for the information in the episode 1 is there a need to operate chisel in normal loom soil of rajasthan good i am glad that you are getting the information yes see whether it is a loam or a clay as long as the hard pan exists and which is across the hard pan creates proliferation of root or restricted to the crop i think i was explaining about the roots now we also you go into it little more on the on the rooting because root are the mouth of a crop so the attention to the root is as important as the canopy on the surface so you should be using that thank you thank you very much sir so for uh, this question from dc vinayak rao i would recommend tractor related question i'll ask mr randava sir uh, a tractor expert and uh, farming related madhavan sir will explain he has multiple questions i'll just brief some of them uh, due to porosity of time we are seeing more and more combined multifunctional attachment like happy seeder rotavator plus seeder plus pre emerging herbicide spray it is very heavy and may require 100 plus hp and four wheel drive tractor please comment on this new trend in palm mechanization can you make an episode on such non traditional tools also can you also categorized tools depending on soil type and structure i am from northeastern part of karnataka bordering telangana state about 170 km west of hyderabad we have black cotton soil with lot of limestone while the top soil up town around 10 inches is fertile unfortunately the subsoil contains lot of salt that dissolves in water if there is excess rain or flood irrigation the salt leach up and turn soil whitish with a ph of around 8.5 national bureau of soil survey and land use planning in mid 90s had categorized state that there should no irrigation be in this area under the circumstance your recommendation of chiseling as a standard practice in land preparation is not well 
थ्रू आउट इफ आई चीजल माई फार्म इट विल ब्रेक द बैरियर एंड माई टॉप सॉइल वुड बी रूएंड please comment mr vinayak rao good question you have put i will answer one by one whichever you have put down i agree with you the first question saying that yes multifunctional attachment require uh, heavier horsepower but our land holdings are small so until we conglomerate the land holdings to a fairly reasonable size we can't have this multifunctional attachments so i think we'll wait for that good day and that will answer also the farm new trend of farm mechanization can only enter in after all what is the mechanization is in a small fragmented land mechanization is impossible which you already are aware of it so i don't have to explain more on that already you have mentioned it and uh, yes we will work on the non traditional tools you were asking about uh, we will you know fix a time and uh, plan a complete episode on uh, non traditional tools i think we have time for that to use and uh, soil type and structure see that is a different thing it can go mainly the tools are operated on a soil say for example if it is a lot of stone piles and granite rock fragment i think it should be our responsibility to clean it once prior to start cultivating or i can suggest you can go a crop which don't mind such porous uh, soils don't go for a finer material of uh, i mean Uh, go, don't go for any complicated crops. Think of some crops which is locally grown in that way, where it can accept a certain amount of uh, fragmented stone and other pieces. Otherwise, normally it is not advisable to go with that. Yes, definitely in such terrain, a rotavator and other mechanical tools do get break up, and other things are there. Uh, no, see the plant residue which you are talking about, a mulching, which is a very much necessary. You have to incorporate all the soil residue back into the soil. and that will serve actually as a organic matter also to the necessary soil and it does contain certain amount of nutrients now you say question was saying you know all the tools are getting choked you allow some more time for it to get disintegrated if your soil is well balanced with the soil nutrients the bacterial activation also take place enough nitrogen is there so that it is easily digested and the microbial activation also continues lack of nitrogen can also reduce microbial activity i think you have to work on the soil prior to doing this and mulching is very much necessary which is actually preserving the soil area good your uh, i i think i've seen your geographical thing your black cotton soil and lot of limestone again i will insist on this uh, a good soil test sh should give you what is the amount of salinity that you have and proper soil amendment should be able to leach them out now you are we are talking about sizzle and uh, bringing up this top soil and bring it's not at all true again i will repeat i think uh, previous farmer friend was also asking that question sizzle is not a cultivator please i will insist on this sizzle is a tool see we are going to show a small video clipping uh, on to the right on this video how this sizzle is operating so you are going to see it's not tilling the soil it's cutting across where you can closely observe it's not tilling but it is only cutting across the soil surface second one which you were asking about excess rainfall or flood irrigation and dissolving of water all these things salt accumulation of salt accumulation of salt could be one is for the uh, your irrigation water so you have to check the irrigation water for any salinity or whether the soil has lot of sodic that means the soil test will give you some results and there are methods to leach out the sodium into a safer zone so that the better crop can be uh, developed because sodium is actually not good for any crop because it it disperses the soil so it is not the soil is not porous so by giving all these details i think I, it looks like your soil is during the rainy season it is mashy and it is when it is a dry it is a rock stones so this is a clear indication that this soil has lot of sodium and you have to manage sodic soil and that's a completely different science of managing sodic soils uh, i think i have explained about you on the uh, soil getting ruined it is not the case it is not tilling cultivator can do it if you really think that a cultivator can go that depth and bringing up the top soil and taking this good top 9 inch soil back bury back in it is but it is not so sizzling is not doing that job thank you for your questions 
thank you thank you very much sir okay i am coming to the next question this is from abhishek patel uh, his question is sir we have seen many diseases in rice farming please suggest some information on how to control it also how we can reduce the cost of rice farming with good production uh, yes patel sir your questions are interesting rice farm see any plant by rice alone any crop like human beings they have pest and disease across how do we manage now we all know now i don't have to repeat that after this post corona now everybody knows your immunity now that immunity is a buzzword for everybody but that word similarly you have to immunize the paddy crop wheat crop potato crop any any anything so how do you immunize how do we immunize ourselves we are ad advocated by doctors nutritionists what take uh, more of vitamins and more of this more of that so the same thing has to be addressed to the rice also so a good soil test and good balancing will prevent as a prophylactic as i keep saying you cannot eradicate pest and disease they are part and parcel of us the moment you are born the disease also born so that means you go travel both way they, they want to live and you want to live so now who fights in nature the one who is stronger wins that's the law of nature so yes. how you make yourself stronger is in you not with others and uh, see reduce the cost of rice farming i would always say instead of saying uh, cost of rice farming please think and post your comments cost per unit why don't you calculate how much i am spending to produce a per kg of paddy then that will give you a lot of openings from there you can get into a good production practices thank you so much sir next question is from sandeep pawar sir please take more discussion on marketing also discuss on contract farming advantages disadvantages and challenges similarly dheeraj panwar also asked sir please discuss more on marketing Sandeep Bawar ji, I am going to answer this question along uh, answering also Dheeraj Panwar ji. So, you know, put the because you both are uh, discussion on marketing. Yes, sir. Anything requiring when you have a raw material, it has to be marketed. How best it is to be marketed in a competitive way? And we are farmers. It is more uh, prone to shelf life, not like other material. So, shelf life also plays an important role. I would always put it in this way. Why don't you find out a marketing and get you know agreement with the processor? See, most of our agricultural producers needs value adding. Anything for that matter, paddy it is to be value added to rice. Hulled, de-stoned, de-husked, uh, de you know all these are value adding. Now I think we have to change as a farmer now to go into a marketing first and find out what is the need of the customer. Why don't we go into that area? find out what do they want i will give a small example on that which i have already made it in my episodes very short i don't want to get into a long one i am also to you know give answers to other friends of our group a cabbage i used to produce 3 kilos head size and uh, the vendor you know my market fellow said no no uh, you know it is not uh, getting a good price and i was getting only 2 rupees and 3 rupees a kilo i thought why is this so i went to the vendor and stood there while the ladies come you know marching for marketing you know they come for buying things they always try to pick up a whole cabbage instead you know small good whole one instead of cutting into quarter kilo or half a kilo that means i have learned their requirement is only less than half a kilo to three quarter kilo so three kilos they are scared now my cabbage customers are ladies now their demand or their requirement is a good small sized cabbage is ideal for them so the next year i started working towards reducing this size head size by close planting the plants and addressing the nutrients so from 3 kilos i brought it down to 1 kilo now i watched these ladies they grabbed this 1 kilo instead of 2 rupees a kilo i was selling at 10 rupees a kilo but my production didn't you know it was it increased whether i produced 3 kilo head or 1 kilo head to me at the end of the day i produced 22 tons whether it, the head size were 3 or 1 is immaterial for me 
because I am paid for the kilo basis. But I was looking at the, uh, the customer side because you have to satisfy the customer so that they are happy to pay you more. See, after all, we both live each other, right? They depend on us and we depend on them. That means it's a win-win. You have to serve them for their choice. So I think you can make a small survey, whether you're growing paddy or this or that, into a local market, find out how best you can deliver it in a quality, standardization. These are the factors getting into a market. Now, my friend, uh, Mr. Sandeep Pawar was asking about contract farming. I will also add that word in it. Advantage and disadvantage. See, there's always an advantage in the sense assured marketing. I think we are already aware if you are a sugarcane farmer, we are already into a contract farming. So there's nothing new into it. The word may be, you know, the nomenclatures, the word contract, agreement, MOU. See, all that is contributing to one thing that we as a grower, them as a processor coming into an agreement. Now, what do you, you know, what are the advantages? You said the advantages are he is already fixing the price for you and you are already ready how to, you know, go with this uh, price, whether it's going to be profitable or not, how best you can manipulate it. Say, for example, uh, 1,000 rupees is a cane per ton. I'm just quoting as an example. I'm not getting into a reality. 1,000 rupees a, a kilo of, I mean, a ton of cane. Now you work backwards. How to produce a ton of cane for 600 rupees? Yes, this is how the business surveys. Now, what are the methods to do it? I said, you know, the soil test method of using the fertilization, optimum use efficiency. And I think I explained that how to use it, optimization of fertilizers how to convert it, quality management, timely harvesting, and post-harvest techniques. These are all good for the contract farming. See, disadvantages are very minimum nowadays because now we are open. The law is open. There's no question of disadvantage into this contract farming. I think we should more and more embrace contract farming so that this marketing issue is reduced and consistency and quality is a, it should be our mantra. You know, we should have these two in mind, even in farming. For example, I produce capsicum, say three lobes, you know, you know, the three lobes of a capsicum. There are four lobes of a capsicum. See, these are all cosmetic look, you see. Ultimately, you're going to put it in sambar or some sabji. That's a different thing. But when people buy it, uh, in my own experience, which I have, you know, noticed it, if it is mixed of three and four lobes, they shy away from that lot. And if I can give them only four lobes, they go in attracted. So, see, to me, it's only a capsicum, but I don't know what the customers see in it. They want a four lobes. Maybe it is easy for them to cut or to make a stuffed uh, come, uh, you know, uh, into the oven. It is much more easier if it is a four lobe and they can stuff it with aloo and things like that. It's for their convenience, right? So if your consistency is not there, it's going to be rejected. So you're going to have a problem with the contract farming. So this is actually not a problem. It's actually your, your quality issues. How do you address that as a, as a problem of uh, contract farming? It is in fact a good one because in contract farming, we, we both are agreeing on conditions mutually and it is written as a, as a you know, understanding of each other. Say, I'm going to deliver it to at this date to you and I'm going to give you all four lobed capsicum to you and the quality is going to be this and I'm going to grade it, weigh it. So all these disciplines, for any other industry, why agriculture is exempted out of that? It should be taken into an account. And I think we should embrace contract farming. And I don't see any disadvantages or challenges. If you really see challenges, disciplining yourself should be the challenge. And market also, I think we have gone to it a little more on this. I said one mantra is consistency and quality. You have to have any product should be consistency. Even if you're producing paddy, I have seen many farmers in southern part of uh, Tamil Nadu where the large part of uh, paddy is grown or in uh, Punjab where they grow second crop for that. I mean, during the monsoon crop, the size of the paddy, if you look at it, one is longer, one is shorter, one is stout, one is thin. Now, when the customer is boiling this for uh, eating rice, this is odd. One will get softened, one will uncooked, one something else. So they don't want this. You see, then the marketing is lost. So these all comes under as your discipline. That means the seed which you are selecting, 
has to be perfect. So that is all Xerox on it. Thank you, Dheeraj and Sandeep. I think I have given you my inputs. Hope this will help you to take into next stage. Thank you very much, sir. Let's uh, go to the next question. This is from Manas Ranjan. Yeah. And his question is, is the creation of hard pan important for paddy cultivation? Hence, is it a good idea to make use of chisel flow to break open the hard pan? Manas Ranjan ji, it's a good, very good question. Yes, paddy, see, that's why I said roots. I always keep saying roots. Now, this paddy comes under a fibrous root. That means it's a very shallow rooted crop. You don't have to have a sizzle for paddy. But then India, we have a long growing season. So you're not going to only stuck with the paddy. And doing paddy, paddy, paddy as a monocrop is not a good idea to have a healthy soil. That means after the paddy crop, you got to do the sizzle for your next crop. As I said, by sizzling, other than paddy and wheat, sugarcane, these are all fibrous rooted crops but even sugarcane needs it because of the aeration and uh, other things. Most of the other crops are all dicotyledon. They call it in a botany dicotyledon, which means they all have a tap root. Mm -hmm. If you can allow the tap root to grow, it will go up to five feet. But if you are shallowing it at nine inches, 10 inches, the root get restricted. Mm -hmm. The disadvantages for that is water. Now, instead of taking the water from three feet, now this uh, root can only go up to 10 inches. In other words, you have to irrigate constantly on this 10 inches only. The volume of water and the nutrient available at that zone is not scavenged by the roots because you have not allowed the roots to grow. Now, I, th I think you have, you have understood the importance of paddy, why not? And for other crops, why? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madhavan, sir, for taking time in answering all the farmer questions. By this, we end our session of uh, question and answers for the episode one. Farmers, I would request more questions so that more clarity can be um, learned on this episodes. And also I would request if you like these videos, please share with you all the farmers and your friends and family. This is crop production technology series. And this was episode one question and answer session. And ensure to click on the bell icon and subscribe the channel so that all the episodes you will without missing you will watch them thank you very much thank you